Wednesday is a night of prayer, but we had open mic and just allowed the Lord to move in a different way, and it was powerful. So in the midst of part of it, um, my great friends, Tim and Sheree, we've ministered together years ago through Cleansing Stream and altar work at Hoosier Harvest and many other places the Lord had led us together. So I want to welcome them up. Um, we're all going to do a little thing on repentance. And um, Tim came to me Wednesday night and shared a couple things, and it was so in my spirit. Um, I was a little taken back that it was just so timely. And um, so Pastor Jason said, hey, can you speak Sunday? And I'm like, uh, really? So, but immediately the Holy Spirit brought back to me about repentance and about what we had shared Wednesday night. So um, I'm just going to kind of kick it off with the Hebrew year. So I don't know if all you're aware of this, but next Friday night, September 15th, is a new year in the Hebrew calendar. Does all of you know that? So you know how us Western people celebrate December 31st with our new year. The Hebrew culture celebrates next Friday with theirs, okay? So um, next Friday will be the year 5784, and it is a year of opening up dimensions and promise with our speech. Isn't that interesting? So we all should know, and this here, I got this off of Chuck Pierce, Glory of Zion's uh, page. The gate is waiting for you. Now, the year 5784 means the gate or the door, okay? We all know we can walk through things. The gate and the door also can shut, right? So there can be some things we need to shut out of our lives, which I thought this is so timely um, of what we spoke on Wednesday night. So then he can open new things for our life. Does that make sense? So this is kind of interesting. I'm not sharing a lot, but I felt to share this. So this next Friday is the new year. Not only is it for our personal lives, what this number means, it's for the church, it's for our city, and it's for blessings. And it said financial blessing in the way that you give. Now, it wasn't meaning you have to give, give, give money. It was meaning how you give, how you serve. So your service, which I think Faye spoke on this a few weeks ago, um, even sent something out, and people thought it was pertaining to monies, but it was really your service. And uh, we all kind of laughed about that. And that's just a church inside joke here. We all were, our app was being blown up. But anyway, so in our service, God sees that and wants to pour out financial blessings because of that. He's the one that made the law of sowing and reaping. And it doesn't matter how you sow or reap, whether it's for good or bad, but his law sticks to that. Does that make sense? You're going to, you're going to, if you reap something bad, you're probably, or sow something bad, you're probably going to reap something bad. Now, does he change things around? Yes. Does he change our hearts? Yes. So, uh, the Lord put, obviously, Tim and Shri on my heart to ask them to pour in a little bit of this. The key, so the doorway, so we already, already shared 5784 is the doorway or gate in which God blesses us but he uses humility. So when we humble ourselves before the Lord, it's the key doorway for this new year. And as well as listening to the Holy Spirit. And some of the things Tim shared with me went so much with this Wednesday night, I could have just fallen over. Um, he's going to share in a little bit, and Sheree's going to share in a little bit. So I just felt like to give you guys a little charge that it's time to give and it's time to receive. All right? The Lord this morning, I had asked him, I said, Lord, could you give me a um, now illustration? And i not joking. I woke up and I got on Facebook and saw Pastor Steve Brown. And he's not here today. He usually sits right back there. Steve and Deb leave tomorrow for Hawaii for their 49th wedding anniversary. They celebrate, it's for their 50th, they're doing it a year early. Does that make sense? So they're off and about. 
But what just happened with him recently is the desires of his heart has been to own his own plane. And he literally just bought a plane uh, just a couple weeks ago and a uh, two-seater. Now, let me do a little backstory. Pastor Steve has pastored for 50 years. He's been very humble in the service to the Lord. Um, he has also been very obedient to what the Lord has led him to do throughout his life. And to me, this is just the perfect timing of this year and this door getting ready to open and this gate flinging wide for him to have this blessing. So I'm doing nothing but rejoicing alongside of him because this truly is the Lord's hand for him to even find this plane, you know, of what he was really wanting. I believe it was up in Plainfield or just a little city outside of Plainfield. So out of all the places, there was only a few of these planes around and one was in France. So he thought he'd start with Plainfield. <laughs> anyway, um, so we are rejoicing alongside you, Pastor Steve and Deb. And you know, the 50 number, they're getting ready to have their 50th wedding anniversary next year. It means the year of Jubilee, which is again, celebration and blessings. So Steve and Deb have poured into the Lord's kingdom. And just because they're pastors doesn't mean you guys can't experience the same thing for your own lives. Does that make sense? You all have your sphere of influence wherever you're at daily life. So God wants this for every person who calls on his name. It's not just because he pastored. It's not because of, you know, as Tim will share in a minute, you know, it's what we turn away from that may just be our flesh leading us and then see where God leads us. It could just be something that simple. But um, I'm going to turn this over to Tim, and then Cherie's going to speak a little bit as well. And you may wonder what this new year has to do with repentance, but it does. See how it ties in. Amen. Uh, thank you, Pastor Jason and Shelley, for letting us uh, serve and, and speak today. But Randy, I want to confirm you first is that uh, years ago I was um, in Florida and getting ready to study, uh, do a, a, a speak basically, and I was in a Bible bookstore and I saw this Hebrew and Greek study Bible. So I just poured out of the shelves, I opened it up, and it turned and it was the first thing I saw was a said. And it said it was the most powerful word in the Hebrew Old Testament. Its, its meaning in the Hebrew Old Testament is loving kindness. It is actually who he is and one of his names. So thank you for sharing this morning. It's a, it's a powerful name. But I also want to thank Jason and Shelley for letting us serve here and, and speak. And, you know, this, this, this is an amazing church, Life of Love Church. And this is, we've been to a few churches. We serve in one in Florida. It's a big church. But actually, when you walk in this place, you can feel the presence of God in this house. Yeah. I, we prayed in Florida that when they moved, it wouldn't lose it. <laughs> and it didn't. You know, that's kind of funny, but it, it, it did. And so, uh, real quick before I get into the other thing is, uh, I encourage you all. I came to here and we served in different places and as far as the water. And uh, we just came and observed. We served in prayer out here we I got in the water and um, so to to immerse people but about two years ago I had a uh, accident I, I we have a pool in Florida and the, I was out cleaning the, the canvas off which is about 14 by 24 feet long and I'm hosing it off and the wind caught it and I went like this and grabbed it and I hurt my shoulder really bad um, it was painful. I couldn't raise it up. I couldn't do anything. So I called the doc, a, a uh, orthopedic surgeon, who, uh, and he said, I'll get you right in. So we came back from Florida. Uh, he got me in. He x-rayed me, did all kind of stuff. He said, well, you don't need surgery. And I said, hallelujah. But you have acute tendonitis. You've pulled it, and it could take longer to heal than surgery. Uh, so I went through... Um, therapy. I had uh, physical therapy. I've had uh, 
uh, massage therapy. I've had prayer. I had everything that, uh, you know, and nothing worked. I couldn't, I loved to play golf. I couldn't hardly get my arm up. I couldn't do anything. So uh, we came back and here, and, and uh, so I got in the water and helped immerse. And the second time I went up to, before I got into water to do the immersions, as I climbed the ladder or the ramp over there, I said, Lord, I've had all, all everything. I've had prayer, I've had therapy, I've had a massage, I've had everything that, Lord, but I need you to heal me in the water. I came as a servant to immerse people. I got out of the water, I walked up the steps over there and dried off. I went into the room to change clothes, and if you know how tight when your shirt gets wet and you go to pull it off, you can't hardly pull it. So I just reached up and started pulling and pulling and pulling. I had no pain, none, none. So I immediately wanted to call Shelly or Jason and tell them, and I thought, no, because I, I want to make sure, <laughs> you know, I want to make sure this is real. And I can tell you right now, it's real. I haven't had any pain since, and there's, the Lord will beat you in that water. And so I encourage you to encourage your friends, to encourage yourself to get in, to be part of this thing that's happening in this church. But also as a servant, and I'm, I'm off topic, but that's me. <laughs> as a servant, you know, the Lord asks us to serve in different ways. And, you know, at our church in Florida, I've, I've served and I enjoy serving. But, you know, we can serve with our presence and ushering and helping the water or teaching or whatever else or giving of our finances. And so I encourage you. They've done an awesome job with this, with this place. I mean, Jason is, is, is and Shelly are amazing uh, what's going on here. But I also know that when you serve, you get rewarded. And that's not something I, I serve to do. It's just God says he'll reward us with that. And so I, I encourage you to give. In Florida, we built a new church, a big church. There's 4,000 people there. And the pastor sold doors. He sold chairs. He sold curtains up here, the, uh, up there. He sold the screens and everything and raised money to build this church in Florida. And I just encourage you to, to give, you know, uh, to give whether you <laughs> give a little or give a lot or give yourself. It's, it's awesome. It makes you an owner of the church. When you, when you become a part of this church, you, when you give your ownership, you know, when you buy something, it's ownership, and you're buying part of this church. So just an encouragement there. But anyway, uh, Jason sang a song this morning, and I'm going to go to here, and it, and it, and it said that... Uh, um, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and it's powerful. But I'm going to read this here, and we talk about, first of all, the other night we had, last Sunday, I guess it was, we had, a week ago Sunday, we had immersions, and there are two weeks ago. But anyway, we came back in, and, and, and it was on Wednesday night prayer. We've been faithful to come there. It's, it's, there's power in prayer, especially when you're in corporate prayer or individual prayer, and it's just amazing what God can do. I've had, I've had God speak to me more in this church than any other I've been to, and that's the truth. I mean, that's the truth. And so, um, uh, but anyway, before, um, I guess we, people were getting in the water, I had a horrible pain in my eye. I mean, it was shooting pain, and it would jerk me, you know, and I thought, what is that? And I, I had talked to Shree about it, and, you know, it jerked me again. And, and she had pain also uh, there. And I thought, what is going on here? And she just said, well, it's spiritual, you know. And I thought, yeah, right. My eye hurts, you know. And, and so anyway, um, I got up and we got to minister outside the water and I was still having pain. And so, um, and other people, I think Chris was a week later or a few days later fell and broke, the, broke his ribs, you know, off, off a roof. That's just amazing. That's that's. <laughs> the God keeping him from hurting himself worse. I mean, that could have killed him. I mean, you fall that far, it's amazing. The, the, but anyway, um, the, the, so the following Wednesday night, we did warring prayer, which we need to do from part time. If you've ever seen the, the movie War Room, 
this lady built a, had a room, and she built us a war room, and she put things on the wall, and she read the Bible, and she prayed she, she fervently for people and for the enemy to leave and whatever else. And that's what we did Wednesday night, and it was powerful. And, and I mean, it was really powerful. And at the end, I told Sheree, we need to repent. We need to be repentant. And I don't know where that came from. I talked to Shri about it the other day, and I said, she said, where'd that come from? I said, I don't know. I didn't know it was Rosh Hashanah that was about repentance, but I was amazed at how that happened. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about repentance and, 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 and how not only the line of Judah, but here it says here that our enemy, which we have a devil as an enemy, it says, um, be of sober spirit, be on alert, your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. It's, he's not real. He's not real at all, but he, he's looking for pu- people to, to basically devour. When, when, the, when, we're, when they're getting in the water or you're doing something for the Lord, the, the devil is out prowling around trying to stop it, trying to cause fear, trying to do things in our lives that want us to halt the move of God. But God's powerful. Isn't that right, Jason? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing how that, how that works out. But anyway, as, I, as I've been praying about repentance, and I talked to Shelley about it, and here's some notes that we made and... and, and um, you know, years ago when Shelly talked about we were in cleansing stream ministry, we were somewhere, I, I really don't know where, uh, ministering in cleansing stream, and they, they did a teaching about different things of fear and, and um, deliverance and all kinds of things in cleansing stream. But they'd give a teaching, and then people would come forward for prayer. And I happened to be on the prayer line. Shelly and I were there a lot. And I'll tell you what, if you want somebody to pray for you, there's the one. I, cause I, I was with her for about 10 years, and I told Shree that. I said, Shree, if you want somebody to pray, get Shelly, you know. But anyway, so, so um, uh, they taught on abuse, about the spirit of abuse. And so this young, they all, this young gal came up to me, and I said, did it, in the teaching, did anything... Re- get revealed to you about the spirit of abuse. She said, no, I'm a PK. And I didn't know. I said, what's a PK? She said, a pastor's kid. She said, I don't have anything like that. I said, what's a, it's a, you're a pastor's kid? She said, yes. And she was real cocky. And I looked at her and I said, you know, how about your words? And she said, my words can k- kill. And I said, there we go. And, and the words that we speak ladies and gentlemen, can it hurt? They're like containers. I've said things to my wife or to somebody, and I like to grab them and bring them back. You know, don't light, but they do and they hurt. You know, I've said things that, that I, 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 even to, I don't want to say, but, they, but I've, I've let them go. But the Lord is faithful. You know, he's faithful. And, and those are things that we need to repent for. And repentance is more than just saying, I'm sorry. I've said that to Shri many times, I'm sorry. You know, I've learned that word pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, it's a, it's a yeah, yeah. It's like, that's what she told me, it's like a kid, kid with, his hand, with, with her hand in a cookie jar. They're saying, I'm sorry. Well, they're sorry they got caught or they got the cookie, one of the two, you know, which one? But anyway, we got to turn to 180. It's, it's a turn around away from the repentance is what that amounts to. So as, as people... We've said things, it's our words, against this city. I've heard a lot of things about this city. You know, there was a dark cloud over the city, and we've come against uh, the, the people that are involved in doing the, the work of the government here. But, you know, we live in a great city. It's pretty. We travel a lot. We go to Florida, but this is home. You know, and we need to repent of those things that we've said against this city. You go drive around... This, this town, and the, the, especially in the fall, in the spring, it's beautiful, you know. But we've said things that we need to repent for against the city officials, against the people that are in charge here, even, you know, just, just things that we've done. You know, and, and, and to go along with, with that, have we, how about things that we've said 
Um, Paul, for example, was on a, in the book of Acts, was on a ship. He was on a journey. And the boat was about to sink. And he said, throw your cargo over. Throw the cargo over. It'll, it'll stay afloat. You know, we have a lot of stuff. It's cargo. You know, we carry with us. And it, it, it's in there. And sometimes it comes out. And so we need to repent and unload that cargo. The best place to do that is in prayer and say, Lord, I, I'm sorry. Lord, please take these things from me. You know, please, you know, and, and it's a repentance thing that we need to do basically all the time. Because once we unload some, here comes the devil and loads more on us. You know, we put it out here and it comes there. To, it's, it's, it's like, it's amazing. And, and things that we, you know, the, the things that we do, the things that we say, um, the, 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 <laughs> I can't, can't hardly bring this out, but you know, um, we do things. It doesn't have to be a sin, but we do things that we. Uh, well, fact, here's one of the, here's one that I I talk about is in James. It says, if you know to do good, and don't do it, it is sin. So we may know to do good, or we may be uh, whatever else, even in our giving, or or. We're supposed to go somebody and uh, go with somebody and feed the homeless and whatever else. Uh, it was, it's not good. Now I can. I'm gonna go back to tell you about something. We were in a church, and I was on a pity party at home. It was in the fall and it was raining, and the pastor called me. He said, "Tim, you need to come down here and pray. It's on a weekday. We got somebody that needs needs to pray, and I want you to pray with me." I said, "You know, I'm tired. <laughs> raining. You can handle it." So I, I, I hung up the phone, and I got a whipping. I, I, got a, I mean, I got a whopping. So I got up and went down there and to, to pray, and, and it was amazing what happened. I'm not saying it's because of me. I'm just saying I, was, I, I didn't have obedience, and I got whipped for it, and I had obedience, and I went. So I went down, went down and we prayed. I repented. Yeah, I repented. I mean, I repented all the way there, you know. So, you know, but anyway, so we, I went there and the, and the, I knew what the pastor was, who he was praying for. And so I prayed for this person here. In fact, uh, and, and all at once I looked behind him and this young man was sitting there. And I, I looked up at him. I said, do you know the Lord? And he said, no. I said, no. I said, would you like to? And he said, Yes. And so he, he got, he, he, this person, this young man, got saved. The guy got healed. Now, I'm not saying because I went, but because of obedience, God was faithful, you know. And, and, and so, <laughs> amen. Thank, but so we have to be obedient. When God calls us to do something, you know, uh, we need to do it. And I'm going to speak about this because I've been reading about it real quick. But anyway, if you read the book of Jonah, Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach against Nineveh, the city of Nineveh. And he didn't go. He went the other direction. He, he, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And so, not to get to, the, get to get to the ending of this, finally, he got in. The Lord prepared a whale. Now, I've always thought about this. If you put him in a whale, well, how'd that happen? Well, because the Lord prepared it. He prepared that we could breathe in there. He prepared where we could live in there. And then when, Gina, when, when Jonah came to his senses, and, he, and he, he, the, Lord, the, the whale spit him out, and he went to Nineveh. And he prayed against Nineveh. Nineveh repented. They had, it was a, a city of about 150,000, 120,000 people. The people repented, and there was a revival there. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And then Jonah got... He said, Lord, I knew you were going to do that. I knew they, I knew they you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I don't like Nineveh. No, I didn't wish you would have done that. That's why I didn't want to go, you know. And sometimes that's something we, that's when we got to go, you know. I don't want to be in the belly of a whale. I don't want to be, be, be that way. And so uh, today is just a time to, re, to repent of, of things that we've done, the things that we've said. It doesn't even have to be a sin, you know. Sometimes we just have some stinking thinking. We, we're, we're not getting anywhere, so we have the blame game. You know, we, we, we presume that everything's okay, and it's really not. And so in, in, re, in repentance, it's turning away from, from evil 
our, our past and turning to God. When we, when we repent, we're repenting to God first. And then we have to agree with him and turn our back on what we did and turn directions. And then we pray that, that, that we don't turn back. You know, turning back is hard. And it's, it, once you get through it, don't go back to it, you know. And so I just encourage you today, anything that's on your heart, on your mind, your family, your kids, any, anything that, you've, that you can repent of and repent for your family. Sometimes it's something we can repent for, things that have happened in our past, in our, in our previous generations. You know, there's something about a generation repentance that I don't know what happened, but I do know these things are affecting me. So, Lord, I repent for the previous generations and what they brought into my family. And that's, that's a powerful thing because we do, there is generational repentance and, and it affects us and it affects our kids. So I encourage you today, and I'm going to turn this over to my wife, powerful speaker, powerful gamal, <laughs> and a mama. <laughs> can say a lot in five minutes. Just, um, just to echo a few things that Tim said. Too often we make repentance a hard thing, and sometimes it can be. But it is as simple as saying, I am turning from, from this to God. I am turning away from my own will, from my own ways. I am turning aside and turning to Jesus. And there are depths of repentance. I wanted to share just a few minutes. It can be as simply as saying a heartfelt, God, I am truly sorry for this. And I turn to you. I don't want to carry this bad attitude. I don't want to carry this negative thinking. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be hurt anymore. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I want to turn to you and look to you for the answer even to this problem. And it, we can make it difficult, but also it can be simple humbling ourselves to the Lord and saying, God, I give my life to you and I'm asking you to change it. Change my heart, change my attitude and help me to be the person, the woman, the man of God that you want me to be. I want to address just a few minutes that there are depths of repentance. There are times that you will be as simple as changing your attitude and changing your mind. But there are depths of repentance when you say to the Lord or the Lord says to you, I want you to tear your heart. I give Holy Spirit permission to rent my heart that I'll turn away and I'll turn and see that my sin is a real sin. It is bad, it is mean, it is nasty, and I want to be free from it. And there, that's times when you say, God, rent me, change me. A broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He welcomes that. He welcomes. And in these last days that we are in, we have to recognize that we are in a fallen state. And this city and this world is in a big mess. And I woke up Saturday with a weight of sorrowfulness on my heart. And I will give a Holy Spirit permission to rent my heart. And I was grieving and grieving. And I got down on my face. And I said, God, what? is going on and I sorrowed for the what, what is going on. I wailed as I heard that many, there were over a thousand people died in an earthquake. Over a thousand. I wailed as I said, God, hard things are coming to America and America is not ready. I wailed. That is a renting of the heart. That is a depth of repentance. That is the repentance of Joel when there is a sound of the shofar and the calling forth the people of a holy assembly to come to God and say, God, I repent on behalf of my husband or my family or my wife. I repent for my attitude. I repent and turn away from those things that is going on in my city. Those things, I bring it to you and make it as a confession to you, God. There is evil in this city. There is evil in this nation. I bring this to you and I confess it. I may not be in known sin. I may not be in active sin, but there's something that's going on that my neighbor may be and I need to stand in the gap and intercede for him so that he's not a lost person. And so this is what God is calling us to. He's calling us to action. That is what repentance is. Is, it's acting. I'm responding to the wooing and the calling of the Holy Spirit.
I'm responding to you, Holy Spirit, and I turn away from me, and I call out to you, God, change me. I can't change myself. I give you permission, God. I give you permission to search my heart, oh God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And we're heading into the season of Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the new year, and there is a blowing of the shofar trumpet that is the seasons of the trumpet. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. Many in time uh, um, men, scholars, w uh, women of God believe that this is when the Lord is going to return. And we are so close to the Lord's return. And we need to be a people that is ready. And so I want to call forth um, Anne to come up. And she's going to set the tone. And we're going to ask Holy Spirit to search our hearts. And this is what they do in the season of Rosh Hashanah. Is that they call out to God and they say, God, I'm drawing near to you, Lord. I'm turning away from that. And I'm drawing near to you, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I give you permission. Give me clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. Search my heart, oh God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And Lord, if there is, I bring it as a confession to you. And I make my own personal confession first. It's not this, pointing the finger at somebody else, but it's back at me. Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. What's in me? What is the depth of my own sin? Holy Spirit, forgive me. And then when our hearts are cleansed, we can intercede for our neighbor. And we can say, oh God, I confess my neighbor has a bad attitude towards me. I confess I see sin there, Lord. For, forgive him. I intercede for him. Forgive him, Lord. And I can confess the sin of my city and the rebellious children and the parents that are having fun instead of raising their kids are compromised. And so when you turn to the Lord and we give him permission to search our hearts, we then go forward into the new year cleansed, ready for what he has for us, ready to pour out. And will you blow the shofar? And ladies and gentlemen, prepare your heart. Ask Holy Spirit to search your heart. Oh. I just call people forward to repent for those things we talked about and even things that you know. But this could be the greatest repentance time in your life. It not only sets you free, but sets people free in your family and whatever else. And it says repentance brings uh, uh, refreshment and, and it brings, it, it, it cleanses. So I invite everybody to come forward. It just, it's something that's hard to do, but in breaking, there's breaking of that when you come forward.
when Jesus came on the scene and started his ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is the authority of the kingdom. So when we walk in repentance, when we walk with hearts bowed before the Lord, quick to repent and turn when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, we walk in kingdom authority. It is the mark of humility, not arrogance. It's a mark of humility. And the Bible says that when you offer yourself to seasons of repentance and you give yourself to repentance, when you do that, there comes a sense of refreshing and there's healing and repentance. It is a gift of God. He woos us and he calls us into that place and he brings his healing presence. You have something to say to him? Yeah, Jason says, uh, which I, I love what he says about 